Good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. Our call to worship this morning is from the 40th chapter of Isaiah, verses 3 through 5, and that's found on page 645 of the Church Bible. A voice is calling, clear the way for the Lord in the wilderness. Make smooth in the desert a highway for our God. Let every valley be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. And let the ground become a plain and the rugged terrain a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord will be revealed and all flesh will see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Heavenly Father, as our opening hymn was titled this morning, Hope for Everyone. We have hope for everyone. Everyone here has hope for themselves, hope for friends and relatives and strangers. But we all pray that everyone we know will come to know your glory in some way in their life and get closer to you. Amen. Because that's the only way to true happiness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Morning, church. Morning. Uh, Lord bless you uh, for being here uh, on this beautiful day that he has made. Uh, we rejoice and are glad in it. Uh, please turn off your cell phones if you haven't done so already greatly appreciate that uh, very very quickly here uh, we're going to do some Christmas caroling um, after uh, church this morning after the special business meeting um, so we will have a special business meeting immediately following the church uh, service if you uh, aren't a member you may stay for that uh, if you are we certainly encourage you to that if you have to be someplace, then please go and make sure that you're at that place on time. Uh, but the special business meeting is in regard to moving some funds and then expending $8,100 uh, and change to um, address uh, some plumbing issues in the other building. Uh, let me see here also, there is no uh, discipleship after church today. Uh, that will resume on January 14. Uh, we also have no Wednesday prayer and Bible study uh, this week as well. Uh, what we do have is uh, we have church next Sunday, and then we also have uh, Christmas carols by candlelight next Sunday evening at uh, 6 p.m. if you uh, are inclined to partake uh, in that worship service as well. Um, the shoebox ministry, is there a deadline for that, ladies? Any, is we're just trying to see what we can do by the end of the year. They okay. actually let you do it all year. Okay. But we're just trying to kind of get a number of what our church okay. can do by year end. Okay. So Very as long good. As you, if you do it, if you would just please let um, Jane or I know so we can post it on the board. Okay. Uh, also, um, we, uh, in the beginning of the year, um, some, I think second week, uh, second Sunday, in the beginning of the year, we are going to be interviewing for membership. If you are um, led or inclined to uh, take out membership, you should please send me an email, talk to me personally. Uh, it would be uh, easier to include you in uh, that time um, as we lead up to our annual meeting, okay? And then finally, uh, Keith, great to see you, my friend. Yeah. Um, this guy's a warrior. Uh, I don't know that I would be here this morning after what he's been through, but uh, I don't know how you do it, Keith, except by God's grace and strength. And anyway, uh, lots of prayers. Uh, did you take an Uber to get here today? There you go. How many of you folks would have taken an Uber to come to church this morning? See, Keith, you're the only one. <laughs> All right. They also all have cars and working feet. <laughs> well, that's true too. That's true too. But um, yeah, anyway, uh, the, 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 whether it's Uber or a car, the point is you made it. 
Right. Yeah, you, yeah, you go, Keith. Yeah. So, okay. Um, anything else for the good of the congregation this morning? Am I? What am I missing? No, just um, with the caroling um, after the business meeting, we do want to gather and be prepared to leave as soon as possible. If we can have a show of hands again, we took one the other um, night at the Christmas party. But if we could have a show of hands, just so we know who we're looking for, how many people are planning on going caroling this afternoon? Okay. All right. If we could meet. Um, on the other side of the handicap ramp, like by the other, by the first entrance to the Christianette building, somewhere along there by the parking lot. Um, that'll just help us carpool and see what we're doing, okay? We're going to Dave Norcross first, and we'd like to get there um, as soon, as early as possible in the afternoon, okay? Thank you. Yeah, uh, Dave Norcross, Mickey, uh, Rose Mulqueeny, and Fred. Fred Legler, okay? All right, very good. Uh, hi, Paula. Are we about? Oh, um, uh, East Taunton, uh, Rainham, and Middleborough. Okay. Yeah. Pretty, pretty close. Yeah, yeah. We won't keep you out after dark. <laughs> but anyway, uh, it will. I, I don't know. Uh, usually, when we we're we're not doing those those nursing homes. In the past, we've done the whole nursing homes, but uh, we're just specifically. We'll we'll sing as we walk to that um, to the rooms, but just specifically targeting those people. Okay. All right, anything else for the good of the Congress? Hi, Sandy. Um, I meant to ask you, are we still going to have Sunday school next week? Um, yeah, I was planning to. Okay. Is that all right? Yeah. I mean, um, no. and the week after? And the week after, yes. Well, right. So I'm going to, uh, Pastor Malcolm S. is going to be with you folks on December 31st, Sunday, because I'm going to try to get down to Philly and uh, see some family. Um, but uh, yeah, so we definitely have Sunday school. Yeah, we're going to have Sunday school. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. Uh, Bob's going to come and lead us in our next song. Thanks, Bob. <laughs>
our tithes and offering verse this morning is from the second <coughs> letter of Paul to the Corinthians, the eighth chapter, verse nine. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that through his poverty, so that you, through his poverty, might become rich. Heavenly Father, bless our offerings this day and all days. In Jesus' name we pray. Uh, at this particular time, um, I'd like to just open this time up to uh, a general time of prayer. Uh, who uh, or what would you like to pray about this morning? Anything on your hearts? Hi, Edie. Hi. Pray for my sister who lost her husband yesterday. <coughs> yesterday. Okay. Uh, thank you. And that was... Um, Paul, right. Okay. Hi, Helen. Barbara McCoy is ill? Okay. Okay. All right, Barbara. Hi, Paula. Okay, very good. Luke? Hey, Keith. I met a number of uh, assorted people in my time in the hospital, and uh, I'm, a couple of them stand out. Uh, the, a gentleman named Ayub, and uh, he's a Muslim, as the name sounds. Um, but we had some uh, discussions, obviously. He did not change right then and there. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, things we discuss uh, will continue working on his heart and uh, that Christ will go out and get this guy. Uh, everyone has pretty much abandoned him. Uh, he's actually been in one hospital or another for like the past 17 months. And uh, he got shot in the spine. He's, uh, you know, paraplegic now. And uh, his, his life has changed, and most of his people are farther away, and they're not rushing him by his side. And uh, so... Uh, and it's, uh, the name, his name is Ayub? Ayub. Ayuba? Ayub with a B on the end. Oh, I, Ayub. Yes. Okay. And um, then there are more Christians that I have met in the medical field than I ever imagined were there. Uh, they're all in hiding, basically. Uh, but pray for our fellow believers who are there and 
just uh, afraid to uh, speak up all around the country because uh, God has His remnant and uh, they are uh, they're there, but you know they they need strengthening. All right, appreciate you sharing that, Keith. Anybody else? Okay, uh, Susan, Barbara, Luke, and Ayub. All right, let's pray. Pray as you feel led. I'll close our time. God, you are a, a miraculous God. Mm -hmm. And as the song said, you know, you stooped down to be with us. You didn't have to be with us. You didn't have to, to redeem us. You love us. And we can't thank you enough for that. Mm -hmm. All we can do is be about your business as you have told us to be, as we are going to share the gospel. Give us the strength, the, the resolve. Give us the fearlessness to go out and share your gospel, whether it is to our families or to our neighbors or to strangers and after every rejection and no matter how much we think we are not good enough or incapable, um, give us the words to say and the desire of your heart and just help us to go out and share your word like you would have us to do, uh, regardless of uh, what the opposition may be, because Satan is always going to throw up opposition. But help us to see the good in the, in the situation and the opportunity to share your word. So whether you know we're uh, in prison, in the hospital, having a great day at the park, uh, that is a good time to share your word. Uh, help us to just to have that will, to have that spirit, to be closely in tune with you and not distracted mm -hmm. by so many things that Satan wants to put out there to distract us, to make us angry, to make us too happy in ourselves, to make us just not turning our eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. And so we all have loved ones. We all have friends. Help us to show how much we care and love them by telling them the truth, always the truth and love. Hmm. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, thank you so much for enabling Keith to be here today. Lord, we hmm. just praise you and thank you for his um, recovery and for um, that ongoing recovery. We just pray for healing for him, and we thank you so much that for as long as he was in the hospital, and instead of spending that time feeling sorry for himself and um, looking inward, he looked outward, he looked around, and he <coughs> ministered to and witnessed to each and every person that Amen. he in contact with, Lord, and we mm -hmm. just praise you and thank you for that, and we pray that those seeds that were planted will um, grow and flourish, Lord. We do thank you for the workers in the hospital and in the medical field that are Christians, and we um, pray that you will just um, encourage them to, to share as they are able with those that they minister to. And Father, we um, also pray for Barbara. We just pray that she um, recovers quickly and is able to enjoy Christmas with her family. And Father, I also just want to pray for those that we are caroling to today, for the individuals, but also for those that um, we will come in contact with just being in some of the nursing homes. And um, we just pray, Lord, that uh, that every song that we sing will just um, touch the heart of someone that um, really needed it today. Jesus, amen. 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 Amen.
thank you for being a boss in this building for the world. We thank you for bringing every one of us together to worship you and to praise you this morning. Lord, we remember how you know, we remember the things you love for the Lord. The one who is giving you the healing of the Lord, we pray for the Lord and those that are sick. We continue to heal them, Lord. We continue to remember the gift of the Lord, Father. Anybody else? Heavenly Father, uh, may we be still this morning and be able to sense your presence. We thank you for making it possible for us to be here today physically um, among brothers and sisters in Christ and those of us who have like mind and faith, uh, who believe in the word of God and the promises of God. So, Lord, we, we pray that uh, you would nurture us in this fellowship and especially the fellowship that we have with the Lord Jesus. And Lord, may we uh, sense your presence here this morning. Uh, quiet our hearts. Uh, there's a lot of things that we have on our minds, a lot of things that we need to get done. And yet uh, we've chosen, uh, as Mary chose, uh, we've chosen the better uh, portion to be here this morning and to be still and to worship you. Uh, Father, I lift up Susan before your throne of grace, and I pray that you would encourage her heart, and you would remind her of the promises of God, and that she doesn't uh, grieve uh, as one who has no hope. Um, pray that you would uh, strengthen her, um, uh, through the many firsts that she goes through with uh, the loss of her spouse. And um, just uh, ask that you uh, would lift her up and again, encourage her and give her uh, peace and comfort during this time. Uh, and I, know we'll, I know it will be a difficult Christmas for her, uh, but I pray that she would uh, find uh, strength in you and uh, love and support uh, through family and friends. Uh, also, Father, too, uh, again, I pray that you would bless Luke with his ability to uh, grasp and to understand. And um, we pray that um, you would bridge that gap in his heart and his mind and in his learning and uh, that there would be tremendous progress uh, that his parents see and his grandparents see. Uh, Father, I lift up Ayub before you. Uh, thank you for uh, giving an open door for Keith to share the gospel. And I pray that all that he knows uh, about Islam would be broken down and that Jesus would just uh, be resonating in his heart and his mind and he would come to know the glories of Christ, and uh, and I pray that you would send other believers to water that seed that's been planted, and that it would bring forth uh, the gift of eternal life in his heart. Um, and so I pray that you would divinely visit him in that way. Uh, Father, thank you for Keith being here today, and I echo the prayers of my wife. Um, thank you for uh, putting it upon his heart uh, to share the gospel, to engage people, and he used that time in an eternal way. 
and we, we pray that there's great, great fruit that comes from that. May the staff uh, that work at Morton Hospital that are believers, may they uh, learn from Keith and how he um, engaged people and how he spoke out and um, give them the, uh, help them to deal with the fear and uh, give them strength to be able to do that, to, to share the love of Christ and to not be censored or um, keep that to themselves. And I pray that same prayer for uh, all of us, Lord, as we find opportunity uh, to share. What a wonderful opportunity to share about the Lord Jesus this, this Christmas season. Um, Father, um, we're very, very needy people this morning. Uh, we uh, need to be encouraged and lifted up and we need to hear from you. And we pray that uh, whether it be through the prayer time, uh, a song this morning, um, some fellowship, uh, the reading of the word of God, or what you've laid upon my heart, Lord, I pray that you would visit each heart here this morning in a very special way, and you would minister to our, our hearts as only you can do. And we wanna give you the uh, praise, the honor, and the glory, and it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, uh, choir, are you gonna bless us with special music?
require? Our first scripture reading this morning is from the Gospel of John, the first chapter, verses 14 through 18, and that's found on page 952. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we saw his glory, glory as of the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testified about him and cried out, saying, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me has a higher rank than I, for he existed before me. For all of his fullness we have all received and grace upon grace. For the Lord was given through Moses, grace and truth were realized through Jesus Christ. For no one has seen God at any time. The only begotten God who is in the bosom of the Father, he has explained him. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks, Bill. Okay, folks, our next song is We Made Away.
Our second scripture reading this morning is from the first chapter of the Gospel of Matthew, verses 18 through 25, and that is found on page 863 of the Church Bible. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph before they came together, she was found to be with child by the Holy Spirit. And Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man and not wanting to disgrace her, planned to send her away secretly. But when he had considered this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child who has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Now all this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall be with child, and shall bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel which translated means God with us. And Joseph awoke from his sleep and did as the angel of the Lord commanded and took Mary as his wife. But he kept her a virgin until she gave birth to a son and he called his name Jesus. This too is the gospel of our Lord. Uh, folks, before I have a brief word of prayer, during the announcements, I uh, actually I was kind of jumping around a little bit, but uh, we had a great Christmas party this past uh, Wednesday night, and I want to uh, thank uh, ministry team, too, especially for all the work that they did to make that possible, but especially for you folks who were able to make it, uh, and you brought wonderful food, and we had the Yankee swap, it was pretty cool. Maybe Barbara's sick because we beat up on her Wednesday night with the, with the swapping of gifts. Not only kidding, uh, but anyway, so um, we had a wonderful time and thank you for making that possible. Uh, let's have a word of prayer. Uh, Heavenly Father, um, I pray that what you've laid upon my heart, uh, you would give life to um, um, the words and uh, to each soul, and I pray that in my weakness, Lord, this morning that you would be made strong. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So, uh, folks, uh, I always try to, I mean, I've been here for a very, very long time, and, you know, I, I say to myself, you know, after like 35, you know, Christmas seasons, what do I tell you folks? Uh, you know, so I'm always looking for uh, new material and uh, things of that nature, but I came across a wonderful article written by an Anglican priest uh, out of Australia. He's the author of over 30-some books. He's a professor of New Testament theology. And I wanted to share a little bit about that article. But the article was entitled, Christmas is about the advent of God, but what type of God? That's a great question. And he opened the article by citing Joan Osborne. She's, a, she's an American pop artist and singer, but she did a 1995 pop hit, and, and the song was uh, One of Us, or What If God Were One of Us, right? And so the author of the article said, that's a great question, but he went on to cite the song that we sung a little bit earlier, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. That was a favorite song of Charles Wesley and George Whitfield, uh, great men of God. But he said, hark the herald angels sing, that Christmas carol gives the right answer. Veiled in flesh, the Godhead see, hail the incarnate deity, pleased as man with man to dwell, Jesus our Emmanuel. And that is actually set in contrast to the question of, you know, uh, what if God were one of us, that song. Because that song... I looked it up, there, and it's actually a really catchy tune, but there's nothing Christian about it. 
Uh, it was a song that was sung by Joan Osborne, but written by another artist. And, and this is what the guy said. Contrary to what many people think, I didn't write the song as a religious thing, considering the fact that I'm not religious. The song is about experiencing something that totally changes your world, your view of the world. And according to Brazilian, this Eric Brazilian, the, the guy who penned the, the lyrics, he said, that experience could range from an encounter with an alien, <laughs> okay, a lot of that stuff going on today, to an encounter with God, to a near-death experience. It is about how everything you thought you knew ends up being exactly the opposite of what you thought it was. And, you know, and there's so much confusion today. You know, I, I was thinking, wouldn't it be interesting if we take to the street like Jay Leno? Remember Jay Leno? You know, he would take to the street and he would ask people like, who's the president? Who's the vice president? And you get some really like off the wall answers. Can you imagine taking to the street, doing street interviews and asking people what they think about God or what they think about the Lord Jesus or about Jesus? I am telling you that as Bible-believing Christians, I think that we would fall over. We would be shocked about some of the answers. Uh, we're, we're living in a, we, we talk about globalism. I mean, globalism has come here and there's all sorts of bizarre views, right? Uh, and, and so, you know, obviously we live in a world today where, you know, we bring God down and, and people want to make anything um, out to be, um, you know, anything uh, out to be God, right? Uh, so, so the song, One of Us, listen to this. It, it, it even asks other questions like, how, listen to this, how would we relate to God if he was just an ordinary person, a slob, just like us? Now, I'm, I'm sloppy, but I don't consider myself to be a slob. <laughs> but this is one of the questions in the lyrics. Uh, what would, what would uh, uh, God's name be if he had one? Well, that tells me that they didn't read the Bible, right? Here's an, uh, what would God's face look like if he had one? And, and here you go. It even asks the question, if the listener would want to see his face, if seeing it meant that they would have to believe in a number of things including Jesus Christ in heaven, would they be interested? This is, this is the stuff uh, as a church that we're, that we're um, dealing with today. I mean, it's, it's you know, uh, Keith, you, you, know, you witnessed in, in the hospital, and thank God you came across a lot of believers, but, but you know, uh, forget about you know, Islam or Judaism. You've got, you've got so much pagan stuff in our culture, uh, it's all over the map. And, and, and it brings me back to the author's article, this Michael Bird, Reverend Bird, because what he does, in, he explores the Greco-Roman culture and philosophical views of the time in which Christ was born and also the backdrop of, of Judaistic views because, you know, we assume that the Jewish people are primarily mono, you know, theistic, and, and not necessarily, right? Uh, and they had lots of gods, and that's why they were displaced from the land. But what he does is this, he summarizes the article by saying, you know, this is what you could propose Jesus to be as divine in several ways. For example, Jesus would be, according to that culture back then, and people's views, he would be somewhere in a divine pyramid. You know, take a pyramid, and they had many, many different rungs of how you might approach God or get to God. Or you have other gods like in Greek mythology. I mean, Paul was constantly fighting against that culture. Or it would be somewhat akin to divinity of a, of a Roman emperor. I mean, you know, these guys deified themselves. Uh, you couldn't have any other God but Caesar, or king but Caesar, right? And then you have philosophical concepts of the idea of the divine, and then you also have the, you know, angel of the Lord or the godlike person of Moses. And so all of this stuff is swirling around philosophically and culturally uh, in the context of when Christ was born. And you talk about, you know, the church, you know, uh, kind of like salmon swimming upstream. It, it, it's a, it was a chore. 
to get the gospel out. And, and, and so the author proceeded to discuss how the early church grappled and sought to clarify what the scriptures taught about God. Because remember, you don't have a Bible complete at this point. They're working off of Old Testament scriptures. A couple centuries later, they're still formulating uh, the inspired, uh, they're, they're still collecting the inspired books. And so the, 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 the beliefs were all over the map. And it was a constancy of change. Uh, kind of like what we live in today. Everybody's all over the map with what they believe. And, 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 and this, is a, this is what the author did, and I'm just going to briefly share it with you before I get to the text. So he, he came up with an acronym called, you know, with wisdom, and he applied it to the Lord Jesus. And he talked about how Jesus receives worship just like Yahweh did. So we have wisdom, W, worship. And then identity, Jesus participates with the divine identity of God. You know, he doesn't seek to, you know, he's, he's co-equal, but he humbles himself and he doesn't have to be, you know, higher in, in, in the Godhead. Uh, and, and so uh, he identifies as the God of Israel who comes to Israel and to the world in the person of Jesus Christ. So we have W-I, identity, Jesus S, Jesus takes the seat of God, the throne of God. He sits at the right hand of God. He's, he co-reigns with God uh, as it, as, and ex exercises divine prerogatives. Then we have deeds. Uh, Jesus performed the deeds of God, all the works that were attributed to Yahweh, raising the dead, the blind, you know, seeing, uh, all those things, uh, uh, Jesus performed. And then we have ontology, the word ontology. What's in a name actually points to the nature of that person. So here you go. Jesus as the son of God is also God the son. You can flip it because it works. And it points to his nature. And then we have mission. So Jesus engages, engages the world in the mission of God. So you have wisdom, worship, identity, seat, deeds, ontology and mission. And I thought that was really, really cool because, you know, it, it talks about, uh, it, it, basically, he's, he's trying to say, this is why the early church worshiped the Lord Jesus Christ based on these truths. Now, take a look at the text here, all right? If you take a look at verse 18, we have the name Jesus Christ. That's huge. In verse 21, we have the name Jesus, also in verse 25. And then in verse 23, we have Emmanuel, God with us. Now, the names in this text tell us everything that we need to know about the person of Jesus Christ. They point, point to his person, his nature, his work, his mission. That's why Christ is the central focal point, the centerpiece of our worship. Uh, Christ uh, is the Greek word for anointed one. Uh, Jesus is, you know, Yeshua, Yeshua or Joshua, the one who saves. And then we're also told that God took on human nature. That's huge. That's, that's totally huge. And if you notice here too in verse 18, it was, this. all this happened by the work of the Holy Spirit, a supernatural work. Amazing. You know, I was, I was contemplating about this the other day, and I said to my wife, I mean, you, you try to comprehend what God did that first Christmas. It's mind-boggling. And, and, and so what I want to do is I, want to, I really want to go after the word Emmanuel here because it talks about God with us. Because it, it's thoroughly theological and yet it's intensely practical. It's theological because what it, its intent really in culture was to pull people all the way from these other bar, bizarre thoughts and garbage that would be competing for their hearts, minds, and souls and redirect them to the person of Jesus Christ. 
and, and to set the record straight about the babe born in Bethlehem. Even, even today, you have people that want to take the Lord Jesus Christ and make him less than God. And that is not proper teaching of Scripture or the Word of God. How is it that the Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make my enemies, enemies your footstool? And so these are, these are tremendous, tremendous thoughts here. He's divine, he's the anointed one, he's the redeemer, and he's the savior of our souls. Uh, other scriptures present Jesus as, as you know, fully divine and fully human. This is why he would weep. This is why he would become hungry. This is why he was tired. And yet fully divine, you know, even the winds and the waves uh, obey him. And these are amazing things. Uh, he's presented as one who is eternal, as one who created, and as one who was never created. Amazing. As the one who has all authority in heaven and in earth, and as the only one who could ever forgive your sin and mine, and the only one who could ever die for sin. That's how the scripture presents our great Savior. Uh, only, and this is, this is a tremendous thought. Only God can reveal God. And this is what Emmanuel does for each and every one who believes. Uh, the name Emmanuel is very practical too. It, it tell, as I look at this, I say, man, did God love me? And you? It affirms his care too. He identifies with humanity, flesh and blood. He, I mean, I think in the carpenter shop, you know, he wasn't that perfect where he always hit the nail, right? I'm, I'm sure he hit his thumb from time to time. <laughs> it happens when you, when you do carpentry work, right? Especially when you're not, if you're not good with a hammer, it happens way often more than, than not. But uh, he ident identifies with humanity and he bleeds, right? Uh, Emmanuel dispels the darkness and puts fear in its place. I can look at this account and I can be still and not fear. Emmanuel teaches us that hope springs eternal. We have a future and a hope by him entering into history. It communi the, 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 the birth of Christ communicates hope and joy and peace. Uh, Emmanuel is life and light and truth. And, and this, is, this is huge. God is not sympathetic. He's empathetic. You see, when you're sympathetic, you say, well, I really feel badly for you. But when you're empathetic, you cry with that person. And you go through it with that person. Emmanuel embodies the very finest aspirations and qualities of the human heart, mind, and soul because he makes us all better people. Emmanuel is the miracle of miracles, the wonder of wonders, and the mystery of all mysteries. And so what God did at that first Christmas, when God became flesh, when God became in his incarnation uh, human, fully human, fully, it, it defies human logic. How do you, how do you, how do you f do that? Indescribable, it's incomprehensible. And, and this is where it becomes, think about this now. Uh, if we don't have an incarnation, we don't have redemption. We don't have a death on the cross. If we don't have his birth, we have no cross. And if we don't have a, uh, his birth, we don't have eternal life because we don't have his earthly life. Uh, there's, there's no promise of a second coming without his first coming. There is no bodily resurrection without him being bodily born. We have no gospel to preach without the angels announcing good news. We, would, no, we wouldn't gather here today. Uh, we would have no word from God and no word of God without the promise of his birth. And that takes us, folks, all the way back to Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. Uh, we would have no sending of the Spirit into our hearts 
if he did not physically come down and physically ascend. We'd have no Holy Spirit. Uh, without Emmanuel, we wouldn't have his teachings, his parables, the Beatitudes. Matthew's Gospel, Mark's Gospel, Luke's Gospel, nor John's. Uh, we'd have no Christian example and we would have no church of the firstborn from the dead. Maybe we'd be a part of another club or something. I don't know. The pagan club. Uh, there would be no one to right the wrongs and no one to forgive the sin and to make it all right with God. So when we talk about Emmanuel, God with us, it's hugely, hugely theological and intensely practical. And as I was praying over this and preparing this, God gave me this thought. I went to Revelation chapter 5. And I want you to turn there in, the, in your Bibles. John has this heavenly vision of God on the throne, and he takes a book, and the book is wrapped with seven scrolls, right? And an angel comes and says, who can open? Who can open the book? Who can open the scrolls? And, and John began to weep because there was no one found to open the scroll. Uh, let, me, let me read it for you better yet uh, than telling you the story. Uh, Revelation chapter 5, verse 1. I saw in, his, in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a book written inside and on the back, sealed up with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and break its seals? And no one in heaven or on the earth or under the earth was able to open the book or to look into it. Then I began to weep greatly because no one was found worthy to open the book or to look into it. And one of the elders said to me, stop weeping. Behold, the lion that is from the tribe of Judah the root of David has overcome so as to open the book and its seven seals. Brothers and sisters, this book would never have been opened if Jesus did not become that babe in a manger 2000, over 2,000 years ago. I, I want to keep on reading because this, this chapter is too good to not finish it, right? Verse 6, and I saw between the throne with four living creatures and the elders a lamb standing as if slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. And he came and he took the book out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb each one holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song saying, Worthy to you, worthy are you to take the book and to break its seals, for you were slain and purchased for God with your blood men from every tribe and tongue and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom of priests to our God, and they will reign upon the earth. And then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne and the living creatures and the elders and the number of them was myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. And every cre created thing which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all the things in them I heard saying to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb be blessing and honor and glory and dominion forever and ever. And the foreign living creatures kept saying amen and the elders fell down and worshipped him. All because the Lord Jesus Christ became Emmanuel. And, and so it gives us a glimpse into why we worship the Lord Jesus Christ, right? 
Regarding Emmanuel, uh, perhaps C.H. Spurgeon said it best. Carl, do we, do we have the ability to show that movie this morning, that video? We got it in here. I can't guarantee it. Can't guarantee it. So I, I'll read for you what Spurgeon said if we can't dial up the video here. It's only about three and a half minutes, but I, I really wanted you to see it. Uh, can we get some lights off, perhaps? And let me turn this, uh, turn this off here. If you look at it on a uh, computer screen, uh, it obviously the colors come up a little bit better. But uh, in closing, uh, Emmanuel is a very, very grand name. It, he rescues us from contempt and ignorance and misery and despair. And um, it, it means more than tongue or pen can tell. Uh, C.H. Spurgeon went on to say it means the whole Godhead is engaged on our side, resolved to bless. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, uh, we would be uh, destitute and afflicted and 
uh, uh, people who have no hope, no future, no love, no joy, no peace, if you did not come, Lord, and uh, become like us, uh, come into this world uh, fully God, fully man, Emmanuel with us, if you didn't do that, um, we would be so pitied, uh, people who uh, would just have a, a, a Christless eternity and uh, just hell uh, forever and ever and ever instead of heaven, suffering forever and ever and ever instead of joy and peace. Uh, we bless you. Uh, we pray that we would take this message today and that we would shout it from the mountaintop, that you would give us opportunities to speak of the glories of Christ, our Lord and Savior. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our closing uh, song this morning, uh, 249, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. I'm sorry, uh, O Come, All Ye Faithful. <laughs> I got Emmanuel on my brain. Go figure. Well, I'm not the only